How many people heard about Jackie Robinson, the baseball player? Oh, yeah. Did anybody in here know that Jackie Robinson was in the military? Yes? So, hey, she, yes? Did you know that he was in a tank division called the Black Panther Tank Division? Stop, stop, stop. I'm taking Hello. Stop. Stop. Okay. okay, so starting off with that, you know, part of the thing that Brother DeWitt wanted to do was bring out the different Black Panther stories that was up in history of African people. Okay? So, one of which is the Jackie Robinson story, how he came to the Black Panther Tank Division. Um, another one, how many people know about Black Panther and cartoons? Cartoon, Black Panther? Children? Anyone? No? Comics? The comics? Back in the 60s, there was a, uh, a comic book called Black Panther. Okay, that was the first time that you see it. So, this movie that you see that came out just recently is a remake of that comic book story. Now, for my people, anybody, adults and children, does anybody know the African country that is most closely represented by the, by what kind? Anybody? <laughs> All right, I'm about to give it to one of the garbage. I know what the garbage is doing. I see the hand going. Give you a letter. E. E. Come on. Come on. Who said it? Who said it over there? I heard somebody say it. That's the queen. Queen's on. You got one right there. Okay. Yes. Ethiopia is the closest thing to, to Wakanda. Now, what's the first thing you think about when you think about Ethiopia? Somebody. The black commercials that they show all the time, right, about starving children, right? But if anybody ever noticed, it's always the same commercial. I'm 42 years old. They've been saying the same commercial since I was little, right? Because Ethiopia is not just those areas. They only focus on those remakes of those commercials to keep us from knowing about Ethiopia and its greatness. March 2nd is Adwa Day. Adwa is a city in Ethiopia. The reason it's important is because Ethiopia was the only South, it was the only nation state on the continent of Africa to remain sovereign. Everybody knows that the Germans and the French and the Italians, everybody had a cut of the African countries, yes? Talk to me now, yes? Okay, so Ethiopia was the only state that remained sovereign. They kept their, their monarchy, they kept their king and their kingdom. It's, in Italy, anybody ever heard of Benito Mussolini? Benito Mussolini, you will hear about as a dictator. He's an Italian dictator. Y'all will hear about this in school coming up soon. Okay, he waged war on Ethiopia. It's called the Italo-Ethiopian War. At that time, uh, uh, I can't remember his name right now, the Emperor Menelik II, called on the other kingdoms from the surrounding areas to come together and unify to defend Ethiopia against occupation. How many of y'all seen Black Panther the movie? Ain't that what happened? Didn't the king unify the other uh, nations to come together to defend against alien occupation? Yes. So this is actually real history that they twist and put into a comic form, into a movie form. So when you look at that, just make sure you know that Ethiopia is the land of our Thank fathers, you, and that is where we all come from. Okay, at one point, the entire continent was called Ethiopia. The Atlantic Sea was called the Ethiopia. Look at all sea. these beautiful people coming. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, baby. So they don't don't just look at oh, those little fine. videos they show you. Never ever pause at what's been shown to you. Always go further and study yourself. Yes. Yes. Okay. So now we're gonna go through a couple more things. Got, got three chances eggs. to I'm win some to tickets eat. here because we're about to do the raffle in a second. And I know everybody didn't get a ticket. So, everybody, you got an opportunity to win. Somebody, one of you, give me something from black history that you know. Raise your hand, something from black history. Go for it. Say it. Say it loud. Something from black history. Anything. Anybody, come on, somebody throw something out. Okay. Mae Jemison was the first say it loud, pilot. Say it loud, say it loud. Mae Jemison was the first black African American woman to go to space. Mae Jemison was the first black American black woman to go to space. Yes, so she was the first black astronaut. That was dope. It was crazy back in the days. Matter of fact, how many of y'all know about Star Trek? The TV show, she was actually on Star Trek 2 with, uh, uh, with uh, Lieutenant Uhura. So, I got another one. So we got one. No, we can't take two because that's cheating. Here, Ms. Dawn got one. No, I'll get some. We got one more chance. Make sure you fill it out. We got one more chance. Somebody teach by this right now. Ready to go. Beethoven was black. Whoa. 
How many knew that? I did not know that. I did not know that. Now, we're going to tell you how we prove that is because... I told him what was happening. He was a mixed background, mixed heritage. If you go in and study Beethoven's uh, family history, people in his family were black. So, he was... <laughs> so, there's a lot of cases in history of black where people that you would think that just was... You that you wouldn't even think was black. About was actually black. Alone. Going even further uh, to look at some of the people in uh, American history, like the actual first president um, and things like that. But please Did you eat don't that? stop here. Don't let black history be a month be the end of your studies. Okay, go in and study first. I'm gonna Took give you a couple other things eggs. just so you can have it in your brain. Then I'm gonna bring up Sister Tanika so she can talk. Okay, first of all, you all know that we are the UNIA ACL. We, we are Marcus Garvey's government. That was set up in 1920. How many people know that the red, black, and the green represent black people? Time out. How many people know that the red, black, and green represent black people? Yes. All right, all right. So we're going to make sure we can prove that. Everything we do, we make sure we can prove it. Just like she said, it was proved by the parents of Beethoven. How do we know that the flag represents us? The red represents? What? The black represents? People. People. And the green represents? Land. Now let's try it one more time. Let's see if everybody say it real loud. The red represents? Black. Yeah. The black represents? People. And the green represents? Land. Right. And just for the clarification, don't forget, the black, the color black is irrelevant. It's the fact that we understand that when we're talking about the difference between us as Africans and folks that have occupied African lands, when we're talking about other people that is not of African descent, you know what I mean, we know that they are not represented under the term black. So we know we have people, just like we just spoke about, about even Beethoven, a lot of mixed race folks that's still family. So they would still fall under that same thing. So we don't differentiate. The color itself is not that important. It's just as a representation of us as a people. Hmm. One more time, Marcus Garvey gave us the government. In 1920, he had 20,000 Africans from 40 different nations around the world <coughs> come to Madison Square Garden and pledge allegiance to the mighty red, black, and green. It was a nation structure. It was a government structure for everybody worldwide, <laughs> black people worldwide. We have a constitution, a declaration of rights, a pledge of allegiance to the flag, and a national anthem. The name of that national anthem is Sasha. What's the name of our national anthem? What's the first word to say our national anthem? Say it loud. You know it, say it loud. Ethiopia is the land of our fathers. Ethiopia, land of our fathers. Remember we just said something else about Ethiopia, right? How many people think the national anthem, the black national anthem, is lift every voice and sing? Yes. I know that song. You know that song? Yes. You heard it called the national anthem. Yes. If we know that there was no nation to connect that to. Yes? That was a that was a poem that was written to honor uh, Abraham Lincoln for the Emancipation Proclamation, but there was no black nation to tie that to. No, I'm using it. I'm using it. Okay, so I don't want to go too long-winded, but I want to remind you one other thing. What we are here doing today is emulating the Black Panther Party for self-defense. In the 1960s, they created the Free Food Program, the People's Party, Free Food Program. Right now, when you see the school, the children going to school and getting breakfast program, breakfast and lunch in school, that's because of the Black Panther Party. At the time when the federal government was not feeding our children, we had to feed our own. So it's our goal here to try and emulate that and try and show them that this is the way to do it. We're going to be doing it more often than we can, as we can. Right now we do it the last Saturday of every month. We'd like to invite you here next month and we're going to continue to do it. Today is a special day though. Today we are honoring the formation of the next black-owned credit union here in Buffalo, New York. The first one was created in, the in 1930. It was called the Buffalo Cooperative Economic Society Federal Credit Union. The second one was created in 1949. It was the Bethel AME Zion Credit Union. The third one will be created as soon as we finish this process under the leadership of Sister Taniqua Simmons. Make sure you fill out the thing and I'm gonna come collect it. Can you fill out mine?
Make sure you can you fill out mine? Yeah. I got one more. Hold on. It's the um Path of the Panther breakfast that we do the UNIA does every last Saturday of the month. Um but today is specifically um we are doing or promoting I should say the uh bank that we are trying to open a black credit union in Buffalo. And this woman you see right here in the gray shirt is the, uh, I guess you can consider her the founder. Um, so yeah, we at the Y on William, Path of the Panther Breakfast that we do every last Saturday of the month. And look at, look at the, the cooks right there, these two ladies right here, my cousin. Then you got the little raffle tickets we doing. Hold on. So these are the raffle tickets. Nubian Exchange Federal Credit Union is what that stands for. Yes, yes. And here is the prize for first, second, and third. Can y'all see that? That's a 43-inch TV. And then two other prizes for second and third place. Um, free every last Saturday of the month y'all can come on down but yeah we about to pick the raffle winners now maybe I'll win something it's great enjoying just fun time with your people and your community Children's, those. We need to start doing this more, you know, wherever y'all at. Y'all ain't in Buffalo. Maybe y'all can get together and y'all can do this where you, you are. Y'all can make it happen. We got the elderly folks. I can't even lie, y'all. I'm having like a grand time, and even though I had to wake up early as ever this morning, because normally I don't get here until like 10. Today I had to get here early, and I was up late. But those two, those three right there in the pink and the blue, those my new, my new friends. I just made they triplets. But the two that's sitting down, well, no, the one that's sitting down in the blue shirt and the one that's standing up, they identical. But those are my new friends, y'all. They are just the sweetest, okay? When I tell you them little girls is the sweetest, them is my new friends. Can we get everybody's attention? Can we just quiet down a little bit so she's going to pull your number? Yes, but how did you get attention? Okay, let's go to the Black Wall Street. Tanika, we need you to use your outside girl votes. We need to hear y'all. Facebook Live need to hear y'all. Okay. How many people are in here are familiar with Wall Street, Little Africa, North Oklahoma? Okay. So for, some, for people who don't know what Black Wall Street was, we were segregated and black people were getting lynched. Um, two guys that were rich, they went and bought their own separate land and was called Greenfield or Little it, a lot of people went there. He built uh, an apartment, he built a grocery store, and then another guy came and started building houses. But the point of Wall Street was the point that within that community, because black people couldn't get jobs, black people couldn't purchase homes, black people were getting lunch, people went to Greenfield, um, Oklahoma, because they were safe. They had schools, banks, everything you needed, they had. When the stock market crashed and, and every other community was struggling, that community was thriving. Like, people, international people wanted to do trade with Wall Street because it was thriving, thriving and it was 
booming. Hey, Regine. One day it, it came an issue where they thought um, it was reported that a black man had actually raped a white woman, and the people from the white town went, they burned yeah. down everything, they killed people. Some people, uh, some people survived, but a lot of people yeah. were killed. They were just yeah. pissed. They just, the whole town went in and killed and burned and destroyed everything. And the reason that they were able to prosper was because of they had access to money. They had two black rich people that actually funded and started the town. And what we have to learn from that is that we need some financial independence. We have relationships with banks that cash our checks, they get our direct deposit, and then when you need to get a loan, they don't want to give it to you. Banks are for profit. They're here to solely make money off of us, mm -hmm. but they really don't want to do business with us. A lot of us are denied access to bank accounts. You fall behind on your mortgage. You might need $1,800. You go to your bank, they don't want to lend you $1,800 because they can't make money off of you. Or they jack up their interest business. rate. They want you to be in business for three years before they give you a loan. But if you're in business two years and you're struggling and you have employees, you need that money. But you can't get access to it because they they will give you a student loan, a credit card. They will give you everything before they give you a bank loan. What's up, Jermaine? They devalue our houses, so it's time to get a roof done on your home, they come out and give you an appraisal, right? and they give you an appraisal that says your house is even, isn't even worth the new roof. So now you're stuck in a house that needs repair, and you may own it free and clear, and no one wants to lend to you. This is why people are being forced out of our community. We have older homes. Older homes require maintenance. They require money, and in every other community, People use the Remember, them older homes got in their too. home to make those repairs. But in our community, there is no equity. So guess what? We lose our houses. The city takes them over. They become vacant lots. Some people can't even get access to insurance because of... The problem is our accessibility to financing. We are creating the Nubian Exchange Fund for the sole purpose of serving our community. We don't want to turn anybody down for a loan. Our, our motto is that we are going to create programs specifically designed to assist those who are not credit worthy, to get you credit worthy. So when you complete this program, you will be stop. We're not talking about three years. We're talking about serving the community because the biggest problem now is that we are we trying we trying for little or no money we gotta and all come together being colonized by people who have access the same house that you couldn't get a loan for as soon as they Hurry. take it they put it on the market for three sit up there and eat, go eat your food how does that happen that happens to i'm gonna pop you in your butt if you don't stop it use practice. your fork in, the two, in 2008, when they had the, the predatory lending, it affected our, it impacted our community Stop the worst because we don't have the access. So we have all this predatory lending. And then guess what? All of those houses went into foreclosure. Now who owns them? You. So that is what we are doing. We are Small hats, that's who owns them. We meet every Thursday at McDonald's right now because you know, no one's happy about our 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 uh, movement for financial independence because right now the more money we make, everybody is benefiting off of the conditions in our community. So with this financial independence, we will be able to support the community and the small businesses, and they can flourish, and then they can hire people from the community. But it's all going to require us having access. To financing, and that's what the new VN Exchange Federal Credit Union is about. So every month we're going to have a drawing, we're going to have social events. We do have a Facebook page for anybody who has Facebook. It's called We Support the NFC 
And at NEFCU, um, like us um, and join us. NEFCU. NEFCU. Oh, here, look. Once we, you know, find some place to be, but right now the most important thing is um, getting the credit, federal credit union up and running. It's going to cost about a hundred to three hundred thousand dollars, and our plan is to have it established by June 10th of next year. So we need uh, not only do we need the money, we need members, we need community support. We have people in our community that get up and go to work and do something for somebody else, for right. somebody else to make money. We need all of those resources to come to us. So if you have the ability to volunteer, please call me, inbox me, hit me up, whatever. That's Tanika Simmons that for get, those who don't know that's watching. Financially independent. Yeah. We are about to stop losing our houses for pennies on a dollar. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. We are going to stop allowing everybody to pray on us. Because we're going to come together, pray, and work, and get this credit union established. Unification okay. is a must. Right. Race first. Where's this credit union going to be located? Where's the credit union going to be located? Well, what we are doing is we're going to establish an internet model, meaning that um, we are going to get ATMs put in the black businesses in our community. The ATMs are going to be free. You're going to cash your checks and do everything you need to have done. We teamed up with the ATM co-op. They're going to provide us with customer service. We're going to be able to do everything that they're able to do. But our goal is to get um, into the community center so that you don't have to, if you need to see or talk to someone, we're going to partner with them when we post our financial literacy. So you'll have some place to go, but we have to kind of crawl before we walk, so we want to get the, the, the federal credit union up and running, and then once we have enough members, then we're going to um, have uh, get our offices established and credit unions, or excuse me, our own separate order. So as we grow. Good question, ma'am. But we're going to be able to serve you just like anybody else, but guess what, at the end of the day, we're going to take care of you. Yeah. Okay. Shake it up, shake it up. Hey, yo, this lady right here says she about to win. If she calls this, she's amazing. That means God is real. I'm not giving nothing. I ain't somebody from the audience. Somebody from the audience. Oh, get one of the munchkins to do it. Get the little munchkins to do it. Come on, Ari. Go and pick mommy ticket. Go and get your mommy something. Come on, Ari. I want that ticket. Come on, Ari. Give me my name. You gotta give me the first baby. Third prize. Oh, is it third? Is it third? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we saw the first place. Which place are we going? It should go from three, two, one. Two, one. Two, one. Yes. Okay. The winner of the fifty dollar gas card is Douglas Simmons. Douglas. Oh. Douglas. Is he in here? He ain't here. All right, we'll call him. Okay. We'll call Douglas. All right, Douglas, you should have been here. Douglas. Douglas ain't here. We'll call them. They'll they get that prize. Yeah, that's what I Come on, Samantha. Somebody love me. Come on, pick my name. Pick my name. Here we go. Come on. The winner of the dinner is Yes, you Go to.
All right, let's shake it up. Let's just shake it up. We got one left. Come on. We want to see who gonna win the team. Just pick one. Pick, just, just pick one up off the floor. Just pick one. Go ahead, y'all back up. Somebody just close their eyes and pick one. Everybody back up. Everybody back up. Put all the turn. All right, ready? All right, all right. She got it. Oh, you picked this out? For the 42 inch green TV for the 42 inch, no, it's 43 inches. <laughs> goes to Nikki McCall. Nikki McCall. <laughs> we gotta call Nikki. No, Nikki not, not here. Okay. Um, so y'all got y'all two winners that y'all gotta call. That was fun. Come on, every month, every month. All right, that was fun. It is past the time. I need my bed, but this was great. This was so much fun. Look at these, this, this they parents, look, see, see, ain't she beautiful y'all, look how beautiful she is, that's they mommy and daddy right there, these my babies, look, I love y'all, y'all ready, alright, time to clean up and go, maybe next time I hope to see more, every last Saturday of the month we do this for now until we can do this um, more often. You know, we come out of pocket and do this, so it's not like we have funding for people doing this. So, big ups, race first, all the time. <laughs> These beauties, look at our children. All the strong. No, 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 wait, 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 wait